something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen, sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing, sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, sister, sister. Is the black church embracing uh, educating the community about AIDS and HIV, using condom preventions and, and all that? For you me, mm -hmm. for me, I don't want to put all churches in the same Listen, group. Yeah. I've worked with several churches in Harlem and some churches are very open, meaning that they will allow you to come in and talk about condom use. Not all churches want the people to talk about kind. I haven't had that experience mm -hmm. because the churches I go to tend to be more open. They're like, we want our people to know what's going on. Right. But there are some churches that they ask you to come and speak and they'll say to you, you can't say, please this. don't talk about condoms. condoms. Please don't talk. Yeah. Talk to our youth about but abstinence. You, but you know and something, Miss Geraldine, mm -hmm. let me tell you, I think this question and the answer is so important. Because uh, we are a faith-based community. Exactly. Okay. We are. And I think the people who are at the church, and again, please call in. Don't be scared. 212-757-1393. Call in. I, I believe that there are people, again, we're faith-based people, that we need to really, the church, uh, the organization, really need to get into the out in the community and really talk about this. The numbers are high. You know, I got to say something, and you know, for me, and, and I, I so appreciate the context that Geraldine just put it. I'm not putting all, you know, churches, you know, in the category, because there are churches out there that has it. formed, but you know, but communities, it, but come and on, they're doing but, but, it. But I'm but serious, the <laughs> but there is a small percentage. There's that, a small percentage, that's right. right. Now, okay, let, let me just take it from, there's a, there's a, there's a program, and I, and I call it a program, because it is so just within that week, the week of prayer. Uh, you know, a woman, uh, an African-American sister by the name of Pernessa Steele, oh, yeah. launched Launched this, uh, you know, she has done this. I think it's about it's into like maybe its twentieth year right now, mm -hmm. where it's called the Black Church Week of Prayer for the healing yes. and awareness of HIV and AIDS. And you get so many black churches because now there's funding attached onto it. It has become a business. Mm. And you know, and for me, when the black church, it normally starts from the first Sunday in March and it mm. goes through that week, and then it ends. And, and then guess it. what? And that's, that's it. it. When right in your congregation, there's a percentage of your congregational members who is paying tithes, right. who is coming to church, who is looking for their salvation, is devastated by this disease at home, have no support, no support. You know, this Family is very members, serious. Their this deacons, very serious. their ministers is not supportive of them. If you go to them again, they want to address it within that week. Mm. But what happens to the rest of HIV doesn't live in the lives of people just within that week. Mm. It's all through the year. So where is the continuum now or where is that support? Where is that infrastructure? You know, mm -hmm. after this week of prayer is over, some awareness has been brought to us, and this is part of our missionary work. Do you work. think that people who think they may be infected by the HIV slash AIDS virus, do you think that they will be ostracized by their church, some by their you family? Know, fingers are being pointed. How you got it? How you got? So how did they get it? It doesn't matter. The God that I know, he 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 never asked. You know how you got it? He healed you. He was there for you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He walked with the lepers, and this is why, again, you know, I talk about my spirituality. You know, this is the accountability that our churches, and they are still not looking because they want to know now how you got it, and based on how you got it, mm -hmm. or who you are then. You mm -hmm. know, I'm sorry. That's okay. You know, if you, you know, I'm getting right. excited. That's yeah, it's all right. You know, we get new furniture. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, go ahead, go ahead. But you bring a good point because one of the things is, like I said, I've been fortunate to work with some churches that are very open. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things we do have to do, I'm like I said, I'm a PA. I do a lot of health education, and I enjoy doing that we also have to push ourselves on them we have to force it sometimes because some churches they're like oh come and do an HIV education but after that if you don't come they're not they're, let me, let me so ask. we have to as okay. a community, community. ask 
Yes. We go to the churches, we support these churches. Yeah. So we, as the people in those churches, need to ask. And I think by doing that, you'll help with the stigma, mm -hmm. because there is still a stigma H associated with HIV. What's and it's more in the African American community, because I have, I, I see let's a lot talk of about young. the stigma. Well, let's let's break mm -hmm. that. What's the mm -hmm. stigma? We gotta get, we gotta clear this. You know, this is gonna be on YouTube, internationally. No, we gotta get this out of the way because we are at risk. You know? And that's the reason why we need to continue to talk about this because there shouldn't be a stigma. And the mm -hmm. point that Michelle brought up is something that I get upset with. And somebody said, "Well, how did that person?" I said, "It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how they got mm -hmm. HIV." It does not matter whether they got it from sharing needles, they got it from snorting, or they got it from sex. The person has it. Now, we're going to deal with it. And I think the thing is, you know, some people, I've heard people say, oh, this person got it. They were hemophilic. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. You know, we cannot separate out. The person has HIV. We're here as a provider. I'm here to treat them, to help them to educate them. Mm -hmm. And for people that are negative, I'm going to educate them on how to stay negative. And mm -hmm. for people that are discordant, meaning one person is positive and one person is negative, we have to work with them so that person stays negative. You brought up a good point. You know, he's a hemophilia. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault, you know. And I've uh, heard yeah. people say that. Yeah. It's sad. Because yeah. sex is supposed to be good. It, it is good. You it's know. part of our life. Ha-ha. It's, it, it, it's yeah. part of the system. Abstinence does not work for people who are sexually active. You, you know? You know, hormones kick in sometimes yeah. at an early don't age. Work yeah, from that population, you know? Yeah. So there is the opportunity, absolutely, yes, to speak to individuals, you know, who are negative. But again, until we get it in our head, okay, once you know that you're about to cross that line or you have crossed that line and you're someone who is sexually active, Mm -hmm. Or even before, I've seen my son, I mean, he's married now, but I've seen my son literally started dating girls, and he's like, we both going to go take an HIV test. Hey. Everyone. He does that. That's you know right. We're both going to do it together. Uh -huh. Stop this, again, the pointing of the finger. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to know your status. I need to, me and the other hammer said, do you know your status? Mm -hmm. Why is it that we, we are so concerned about that person's status when we haven't even looked at ours. Please call in the show 212-757-1393. I'm Dietrich Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show. I know that you all are watching. I know that you all have questions or comments about me. We have two young lovely people here that are very thorough about this infectious disease. You may have comments or questions. Please call in 212-757-1393. I know you said that it's not important where they got it from, but I do have to ask you this. When you first found out, you did approach the person. Yes, I did. I, in fact, um, I have to be honest, I pretty much made contact with, one, you know, with, with individuals who I knew from the period of time in my daughter, mm -hmm. when I got pregnant with my daughter, to the time that this child that's, was that's born. That's brave, though. That's and the brave. person who I made contact with, that was the person who was responsible mm. of transmitting the virus, you know, passing the virus on so to me. So how did you feel about that? Were you angry? You At the to present smile? time and the moment when I, yes, I approached him, I was very angry. And you seem, you I know was, something, Miss Lopez, you seem like a person that can give somebody a tongue lashing. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. And it's not even sort of a tongue lashing. You that, know, it was actually a reality of, you knew, you found out. Okay, so what you What did were, you do? What did you, you do? Were. You know, because I'm doing the responsible thing. So but he already knew, and he, he didn't he knew, tell you. He knew, he just didn't. And still to this day, he does not want to accept that he's infected. Really? Yeah. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. Denial. I got gotcha. you. It really, really happens. Mm. And it's a, it's a safety net for some, again, of our, you know, individuals in the black community not to deal with, because when we talk about, again, we keep using this word stigma, mm. but we talk about a diagnosis of someone, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm telling, you know, your view and audience, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm someone who's living with HIV, I'm, I'm someone who's not letting my diagnosis define me, mm -hmm. but I'm someone who is committed to letting our community know we can stop this. Right. How did you get Raven involved? Well, how did Raven get involved? 
I your daughter. Disclosed, yeah. I disclosed to Raven from the age of six up until today. We still talk about this diagnosis because this is a young lady who was born with HIV. Mm -hmm. She don't know what it is to be negative. She was born in a, you know, within the generation of kids being born into a society of a disease that is ostr you're ostracized, there's stigma, there's discrimination, mm -hmm. there's, you know, all of the isms. Mm -hmm. But there are factors related. And I want this, you know, I, I had to be able now to work with this young lady because remember again, I'm in a household where one is negative and one is positive. She has an older brother. Right. Right. He's not infected, and she have to now. What were she, the questions? She was raised in what that environment. What were the questions that she asked? The questions at one period of time. I mean, her questions was, "Mom, why did this happen to me? Why had how to?" She said, she? "How come?" How old, she started old she? asking me that question between, let's say, by the time she hit 11, 12, 13, 14. That's when because she's interested she's in guys. In the hormones, yeah, the hormones. hormones is kicking in. She wants to feel normal. She mm -hmm. started realizing, "Oh my God, I'm mm -hmm. not really normal." Mm -hmm. And I had to get into this mindset, you are normal, because a normal household today, there might be HIV in that household, Raven. Mm. How I, do you break that? And I'm glad she brought that up, because one of the things is when we have young, especially young people living with HIV, mm -hmm you get into that time when they're a teenager, they're a rebel, and some of these patients are on medications. Mm -hmm. And you know, they need that extra support because it's like, they wanna be like the other kids, but mm -hmm. then they have to take these pills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids are on a lot of medications because they were born with HIV. Yes. You emailed me an article yes. about there are six cities oh, yeah. that have a high percentage mm -hmm. of this infectious disease. What were those cities again? Do you remember? No, it was um, New, York, New, York, New York, Newark, 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 mm -hmm. Atlanta, Atlanta, DC, DC, uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, Florida, um, Miami, Miami, Florida. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. New York and, yeah. and 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 Mississippi, Louisiana, Mississippi. Yes, you know, indeed. A friend, um, I, when I was telling somebody that I was doing the show, and I was you know telling her the statistics, mm -hmm. she kind of you know got kind of. You know, mm -hmm. like hmm. she refuted that. Yeah, yeah. She, she thinks it was true. It yeah, she, thinks. she thinks that, and I had to listen to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying, right. but yeah. this is a question I want to ask you: Is it because that a lot of other groups are not being tested? Geraldine again touched on something when we talked about how being poor. Look at these cities again where we identify these high numbers that are disproportionately affect, you know, affecting the black community. These are our poor neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. There are Zip social code. related factors because of poverty. You're gonna see certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. Because of just the impact of poverty, you're seeing certain behaviors. And these are the behaviors that's putting us at risk. And this is why, again, I feel as if there's this complacency or just this, oh, you know what, uh, HIV. I remember I heard someone who's a provider use the term HIV is not sexy anymore. Mm. Since when did we ever look at HIV as being sexy? And I think who from said, my experience. Who said that? From my, <laughs> oh yes, from my experience, too many times as black people, we have accepted the unjust. Just. We have accepted, the, you know, the different labels as being, you know, so to me, HIV right now becomes like another accepted, you know, um, issue that's affecting the black community. So we should just sweep it up under the carpet and go ahead, mm -hmm. go about well, our I merry ways. What Michelle, I just want to part, um, touch on that part with the sex. There was a lot of ads out. Mm -hmm. where they had ads, people looking, you know, mm -hmm. sexy. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it was to get some acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the ad was good mm -hmm. to get people accepted. Mm -hmm. But I also think parts of that ad had a problem because mm -hmm. sometimes people think, oh, if I get HIV, I'll just take a pill. And mm -hmm. you know what, I'm a treater. Mm -hmm. So I want to treat your HIV, mm -hmm. but I also really want to prevent you yep. from getting, HIV has a lot of complications. It's not just mm -hmm. about HIV. Yes. The longer you live with HIV, especially if you're African American, mm -hmm. you're more likely to get kidney disease from HIV. Yes. Mm. You're, you'll have higher rates of cardiovascular yeah. disease. So we already, in the African American community, have higher rates of diabetes and high blood pressure mm -hmm. and high cholesterol, mm -hmm. and having HIV will put these even at a higher risk. Mm -hmm. You know, so it causes a lot of inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. People that are HIV positive, especially if they got HIV through intravenous drug use mm -hmm. or even snorting cocaine and sharing. You know, I didn't know that, snorting cocaine, yeah. you get HIV? Yeah, because the blood, the blood. you're sharing 
the equipment. equipment. You have blood vessels. You have blood vessels yes. in your nose. Maybe I don't know, but I don't know about cocaine. <laughs> yes, okay. Break it down. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the clinician. She's going to break it okay. down. Okay. You have blood vessels in your nose. Okay. So if somebody's HIV positive and you share the same straw and you pass it on, you can get okay. it. Okay. Oh, I didn't know about the straws and stuff uh, like that. Yes. yes. Drug paraphernalia. These are paraphernalia. If you, drug paraphernalia that yes. are shared, you can get mm -hmm. HIV. Even hep C. Hepatitis C. And that's one of the things that's now my new baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing that I was telling you also too. Today when you contract HIV, it's not just HIV. HIV. You're being exposed to it, you're contracting. We are coming down again, coming back to women. HPV, the human papillona virus, it is a very common virus now in women who are positive because when we got infected, it was not just HIV that came into us, you know, through that vaginal pathway. We contracted HPV. We were exposed to herpes also too, mm -hmm. which is a sexually transmitted infection also. Mm -hmm. These are complications that we, you know, we can get this. An STD, an STD makes you four times more susceptible as a woman of contracting HIV because it's a host. Mm -hmm. An STD is a host to HIV. So mm -hmm. when you're thinking, you know what, I got treated for chlamydia, you, you know, I got it. treated for gonorrhea, <laughs> take an HIV test because couple months down the road or maybe again if you keep going around in that cycle you keep being reinfected by that person something, HIV is going to come into the pit here. there is yeah. common threads and a lot of us as women who's making the fortune 500 you know women from women who are the poor black woman in the community living on welfare we have some common threads okay. and when we look at these common threads we can see why you're susceptible based on certain behaviors I know about you you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm not saying you literally but I know of a woman who you know she's making a six figure, you know what I'm saying, she has a nice car, you know, she goes and, and she stuff. think that she There's is common that. things that me and her, as this woman living here with HIV, we have, and because of me knowing these things about her, I can tell her, if you keep this up, you're going to be positive. You're watching Sister Talk TV show. I am your host, Deetra Kelsey. Yeah, I'm here with <laughs> Geraldine Joseph, you know, <laughs> I wanted to call you something else. Mm -hmm. And her friend, Miss Michelle Lopez. I think I asked you this earlier, but how, how did you get Raven involved in this? How did, did she want, did she want to, or did you convince her, or she saw what you were doing? Raven asked to be involved when she started seeing her mom going to conferences. This was a child, as I said, I've been speaking to her about her diagnosis since the age of six. Mm -hmm. I explained it to her, to her knowledge base. And as we continue having the conversations, the more experiences she had, she realized, oh my goodness, you know, this is the reason why, you know, mom took me to this conference because she's seen other people and she's hearing the discussion. Children, you know, yeah. they have their own interpretation, mm -hmm. their understanding. And once you have the door open to have the discussion, I didn't lie to her and say, Raven, but you have a blood-borne disease. <laughs> Raven, you have a disease that's called HIV, and both mommy and you have it. And I remember when Raven first realized that HIV was a disease that had stigma and taboo attached onto it, was based on an experience she had in school. Yes. She went to school, and she, you know, they were having um, a talk and tell, or mm -hmm. teach and tell that day. Mm -hmm. And Raven went to school, and sure enough, her teach and tell was to tell the class and her teacher, my mommy and me have a disease called <laughs> HIV. And we we got to go on the TV show called Oprah, and the whole <laughs> class went up in uproar. The teacher called, you. called me. The principal of the school called oh me, God. saying that the teacher now wants to wear gloves to teach Are Raven because they found out that this child, she told them that she have HIV. Is it accurate? Yes. Yes, she was born with HIV. The medications that have been coming when, you know, when I sent her to school and I gave it to the school nurse for her to take during the day, yes, that's medications for her for HIV. And when that child started experiencing the discrimination from mm. adults in the board of ed system who mm. didn't take it upon themselves to learn and understand how and they this probably disease, had it themselves right <laughs> uh, for all you know yeah. they were doing the same things that caused yeah. me to become infected they right. were having sex with somebody right. and didn't know the person's status mm -hmm. that's it that i want to say Mm -hmm. We are out here still having sex with individuals and we know nothing about their status or our status. So Raven <laughs> asked you, she said, I want to be a part she of what you She told me, doing. yes. Raven spoke at a conference, New York State AIDS Institute. How God old was she then? Raven was 10 years old when she <gasps> asked me to speak really? at a conference. There was over 2,000 people at this conference mm -hmm. and she got up on the stage and she literally told this audience, I am 10 years old and I've already counted. I've been in the hospital over 90 times throughout my life. Lifestyle wow. because of this disease called HIV, 
what are you guys doing to help children like me? She said, mm -hmm. I don't know. This child was 10. I stood there and looked at my child and said, my God, out of the mouth of babes. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know what, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. She's not the only child in the state of New York who was born with HIV. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have done a tremendous amount of work. Mm -hmm. We have less than 1% of children now being born with HIV in the state Very of New good. York. Very New good. York has done diligence with Jenny. pregnancy mm -hmm. and blocking the HIV transmission. But the ones, <laughs> yeah, the ones who were born with it, who is growing up now, right. they, my daughter's going to be 22. She has a boyfriend. Mm. Cute, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and you know. Uh, By the way, these are friends, <laughs> as we can yeah. see, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, so you were, no, I, as a medical provider, think any woman that is pregnant, and if you're HIV positive, you better get into care. There is no reason for a child to be born in the state yes. of New York, or even in the United States, but you know, each state there's some issues with funding mm -hmm. right, to right. be born with HIV. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we can put women on medications yes. after they complete their Treatment first works. trimester. Because during your first trimester, you have a lot of nausea and vomiting, and the medications can cause that side effects. So we wait until after their first trimester mm -hmm. and put them on medications to prevent them from giving HIV to them. Okay, child. I think we have a phone call. Uh, hello. Hi, how are you doing? You're watching Sister Talk TV show. I'm your host, Deetra Kelsey. Say hello to my guests, Geraldine and Hi. Michelle. Hi. Hi. Hello. hello. Tina from Manhattan. Hi, Tina. Yes, um, I'd just like to say that if you just watch the um, Maury Povich and the Jerry Springer show, you get a good idea yeah. about why it's spreading. Because <laughs> right yeah. It tells you right there on the other shows. Okay. Yes. Everybody's sleeping with everybody. And okay. It's uh, la 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 and he 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 yes. oh, oh, oh and. That's why. <laughs> okay, yeah, that too. But you know, uh, Michelle was in the. Thank you for calling, Michelle. Well, you were in the committed relationship. Thank you. you yeah. Thank you so much, thank Tina. You. Yeah. But you, that that is a factor, and that is true. But in this case, you were in a committed relationship. Absolutely. You, nobody. Yeah. You weren't going around sleeping no. with this person, no, that person. I was not. This guy knew he was infected. And he, he found out to, during my pregnancy. He found out he during, found during my pregnancy. During, and he still wouldn't tell to save no. you or your no. child's life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the issue that we're having well, right now. But I can't just get locked into that. You know okay. what I'm saying? I can't just get locked in it because it takes away the responsibility of yourself. of yourself. We need to start letting each of us know, as men and women, our accountability to ourselves. We have done, you know, we have done an unjust to ourselves. Letting people think someone else is responsible for protecting your life Ooh, from contracting and HIV. You got that right. Honey. And I think that's an important thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm married. Mm -hmm. My husband's here. Yeah. And, you know, here. being in New York <laughs> City as a young woman before I got married, mm -hmm. you have to have that dialogue with the person that you're with. You got to talk about it. You got to yeah. talk about it. You know, you have to have that strength to say, you know what, if you want to sleep with me, you better put on a condom. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that we need to focus on. Okay, we let's, really let's focus need, on that. Reason, let's, let's that's talk a about, big thing for me because right. I have no children, but I have three beautiful goddaughters. Right. One is married, and uh -huh. I have two young goddaughters. One is six, one is six, no, one is 17 uh -huh. and one is 18 now. Okay. They're about to go to college. Wow. Mm. You know? Hey, and those, that's the experimental no, years no, right there. And the reason I want to bring this up, <laughs> oh they're God, about to go do. to college. Please do. And I am having the talk with my guy, and I will continue, and I text them. You know, if he says you're cute, you better tell him to put something on. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at that age, somebody says they're cute. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, you get in this old they're very playful. State of mind. You know, mm -hmm. a guy could say something to them, and mm -hmm. they, you know, whatever. My husband talks to my goddaughter and has talks with her as a African American male, telling her, "You have to have these conversations mm -hmm. because you know what? They had a study that was done. I can't remember how many years ago, mm -hmm. and they went to a um, black college campus. Mm -hmm. It was in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the Chapel data. Did it. Yes. Uh, it was in Chapel yes. Hill, mm -hmm. and they were looking at people that they basically came into school mm -hmm. and people that got infected. Yes. Wow. So wow. Yes. we need to talk so to our children. Data. Because okay, when let's, talk about, school, let's talk about the prevention, the prevention method. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. Is it only just condoms? Con male condoms, female, female condoms. condoms. They have female the condoms. Oh, yes. And female the thing condoms. that you have to understand, yeah. Michelle talked about behavior. You know, when somebody drinks and they're a little bit tipsy, mm -hmm. they may be a little bit off. So as a result, they may not say, put on that condom. condom. 
Or they might say, the guy might be like, I put it on and he didn't. So you need to be alert when you're having sex. So the yeah. best prevention, you said, don't do an uh, intravenous drug. Yes. Uh, and if you do, not if, 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 you, if you use, if you want to shoot, needles. Don't, don't, share needles. Needles. don't share needles. Don't share needles. Don't because share not needles. just intravenous drugs is don't a method share, of sharing, you know. Don't share drug paraphernalia. paraphernalia. Don't share straws. Don't yes. share they cookers. Have cot, cookers, cotton yes. balls. Cotton balls. <laughs> yes. Don't share drug paraphernalia. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What's the treatment? Okay. What's the new treatments out wow. right now? So currently, for mm -hmm. HIV, mm -hmm. the guidelines change like every other day. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, you got to be on top of it. But currently now, mm -hmm. it's being stated if you're HIV positive, mm -hmm. regardless of your T cells, yes. you should be on medications. Yep. For several reasons. There was a time we used to treat you if your T cells were less than 500. Right. Then they changed it to treating you if your T cells were less than 350. 350. They're 350 to 500, we could watch and, you know, sometimes based on your viral load. Mm -hmm. However, now, looking at all the data throughout the years, what we find is HIV causes a lot of inflammation when I stated earlier. Mm -hmm. So it affects your organs. And when we look at African Americans, I cannot say this enough, renal disease that is mm -hmm. affected by HIV HIV is 90% African American, black people. Mm. So if you have any underlying renal disease that is due to HIV, you have to be on meds. Mm -hmm. You got, we got to protect Renal you. disease. Yes, your yes. Kidneys. Kidneys. Your kidneys. Kidney failure. Your kidneys. Right. And when we look at the statistics surrounding uh, renal kidneys. health and kidneys disease in the black community, community that's is telling ridiculous. us something. Mm. So Horrible. now with the new guidelines, it doesn't matter. Even if your T cells are over 500, okay. you need to be on meds. One, what? by being on medications, yeah. you can prevent giving HIV to somebody to else. Somebody okay. else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, we got two minutes we left. We got two minutes left. We got two, I told you to go by fast. <laughs> you know, you can prevent. You know, we, we have an uh, uh, after show. Also, I, you have to give the closing statement. Bounce TV, see what we're doing? We're educating the community. We are in the community, that's what we're doing. Give us a call, please. Like us on Facebook, Sister Talk TV Show. Uh, uh, tweet us on Twitter, <laughs> Sister Talk TV. I want to thank uh, the creator and the director and producer, Zaki Z Starman. Ginger in New York always come through. Our new cameraman <laughs> <laughs> Zaki, of course, Zaki. My closing statement is really off the top of my head. We got people in the community that are really out there trying to save our community. Yeah. And I really believe it's up to us, black women. Yes. We, it's the only way that we're going to do it. We are the nurturer. We are the cushion. We got to tell those guys, put on a condom. Yeah. No. If you suspect. If I don't know your status, yes, I want yeah. you to put on a condom. Well, yeah, if you don't know, yes. even if it's a one night stand, yes. zip it out, baby. Yes. Lamb swore, lamb skin. I heard that's not no good. Oh, yeah. I don't even think they sell that. that in the, I, I don't think it's don't. on the shows I, anymore. I, I, they're doing my I don't research, think it's on yeah. this year. So it like not us be. on Twitter, like us on Sister Talk TV show, Facebook. Hey. I'm Dietra Kelsey. I want to thank my guest, Geraldine Joseph. Thank you. Miss Michelle Lopez, girly girl thank you. here. <laughs> <laughs> For gracing our set on Sister Talk TV show. I'm wishing you peace, love, and light. Bye. <laughs> Get music. That was close. Yes, oh my God. Thank you so much. I didn't even get to Wow. Sister Talk, sister, sister. Sister, sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk. Something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen, sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing, sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, sister. Sister, sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, sister, sister. Ooh, sister talk.